Hi, and welcome to Shoreline Conversations. I'm Marilyn Giuliano, the state representative for Lyme, Old Lyme, Old Saybrook, and Coastal Westbrook. And I'm very happy to be with, with two friends, uh, two important people in their communities here today. Steve Ross, a board member and corporate secretary of the Lyme Art Association, and Jan Murray, a well-known local figure and the president of the Old Saybrook Education Foundation. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Hi, Marilyn. Steve, you were really the genesis of a bill that I was just successful in getting passed uh, in the legislature. In fact, the, the bill is behind us as we speak. It's formally known as an act concerning the regulation of charitable funds, but it's really all about the quiet work of nonprofits and what they mean to communities. And you brought this idea to me a few years ago. Talk with us about that, Steve. Well, um, the Lyme Art Association is a small uh, association, and it's membership-based. So our dollars are important to us because we don't get a tremendous amount of funding from grants, and the, the membership tends to support itself. There's a tremendous mm -hmm. amount of volunteerism. We only have uh, two full-time and one part-time employee, yet we put on uh, approximately eight exhibitions each year, plus other special events. And when our treasurer mentioned to me that there was a state requirement for our organization to have an annual audit and that the cost of the audit needed to be budgeted, uh, I was kind of surprised to learn that. And then when I found out the cost of these budgets, uh, I knew something had to be done. Our association was over the threshold of $200,000 in annual revenues, um, but a great deal of our revenue comes from the membership itself, membership fees, entry fees, uh, small amount of donations, and this represented a, a tremendous financial burden. These audits cost four, five, six thousand dollars. Isn't that remarkable? And when you hit what had been the, the threshold of two hundred thousand dollars, anything above that kicked you into that annual certified public accountant audit of all of your finances. The cost struck me as totally out of proportion to the revenues of the of the association and the purpose that the audits fulfill. And that's when I contacted you, and it seemed to me that the, the most simple and equitable solution was to raise the threshold so that it would impact the smaller non nonprofits less. They would be exempt. And that's what you were able to do, was raise the threshold to $500,000. Well, it took a lot of collaboration, as, as you well know. And it took a lot of time, but it has the great benefit, say, in, in the um, nonprofit that Jan represents as, as president, you know, the old Saybrook Education Foundation, does a lot of good for the community. We do. We provide grants um, for programs. Um, we provide grants for students to uh, attend activities that might be outside of the town budgeting process and outside of the, the school budgeting process. And a bigger portion of what we do is provide scholarships for students to enter college. And uh, last year alone, we um, were able to donate to students, directly to students, over $40,000. Now, it, this is important because if the threshold, if we did reach the $200,000 threshold, that's five, six thousand dollars that wouldn't be able to go to students to provide programs for them. I do want to mention that your persistence and your staff's persistence in pursuing this was really the reason that it was successful. 